In this video, we're going to have a look at the pop item method of the Python dictionary class. Let's consider the pop item method of the Python DICT class, the dictionary class. Now, the things about this particular method are as follows. It does not take any parameters. In other words, when you send a message to an instance of the dictionary class, the pop item takes with it no parameters. What it does, it returns an arbitrary key value pair, in other words, an item, from the dictionary. It also removes the same key pair value from the dictionary as the one that's actually been returned. Of course, the pop item method is precisely that, a method. Now, this implies that we're dealing with the object oriented paradigm of the Python programming language. And when I'm dealing with the object oriented paradigm, I like to consider the execution space because it's in this execution space that the objects come into existence and the objects are sent messages. So if I now consider an appropriate program statement to illustrate what the pop item method does, the one I'm going to choose is this one here, and it's one we've seen before. Now this is going to create an instance of the dictionary class, and of course the dictionary class we've looked at before, and we know we can roughly represent it by the following UML class diagram. And this class diagram shows us all of the methods within the instances of this class. And here you can see we have the pop item method. Now, of course, what will happen when this line executes is an instance of the dictionary class will be created. And that instance is shown here. And you can see that it gets populated with all of the methods that were defined in the class. And in the green shaded area here, you can see we have all of the items. And of course, these three items were taken from here in the program statement. In other words, this program statement was responsible for putting these three items within this instance of this particular class. If we look at this instance, we can see its name is capitals. That's because that was the name here within the code. And capitals is now, of course, the name that is bound to this particular instance. Let's now consider the following program statement. And you can see it is returned underscore value is assigned. And on this side, you can see there's a message. Now, this message is a message to the object that you can see in the diagram. And I'm going to represent the message with this arrow here, which you can see is pop item with the brackets. And if you look in the brackets, you can see there's nothing there. And that's because, remember, the pop item method doesn't take any parameters with it. And of course, what this message is going to do, it's going to invoke this particular method here. Now, this method is now going to work upon this. Now, the pop item method will have the code that will allow for this particular item here, the key value pair Germany Berlin, to be returned. And we can see it being returned now. And of course, where it will be returned to will be here, this return value. So in other words, this particular message here has resulted in the returned value having returned to it this particular item. Now, it doesn't stop at that point. What the pop item will now also do, it'll remove this key pair from the actual dictionary. And you can see I've got that animated here. And now what you are left with is just these two items within the dictionary. Just as a little bit of an aside, let's just concentrate on this pop item method for a moment. You've seen illustrated what it does. Now, as a programmer, that's what I'm interested in. What does it do for me? What can I get it to do? I actually have no idea what the code is inside this method. And more to the point, I actually don't care as a programmer. What I am concerned about is the fact that this will perform the task that I want it to do for the purpose I'm attempting to get it to do it. How it is implemented, well, I'm quite happy to take on trust that whoever was responsible for the DICT class, that this particular method will work in the way in which it's described in the documentation. What I'm really interested in when I think of methods is what it does, what parameters I need to pass 
when I actually invoke a method within an instance of a class and also what's going to be returned by that particular method. Other than that, I'm not really bothered how the code works inside the method. Of course, if I'm writing the class, I do need to know what the code is in the methods because I'm writing the actual code that goes in the methods and I have to test to see that the methods perform correctly. To help us with our understanding of the pop item method, let's have a quick look at this computer program here and its runtime. Well, here you can see the runtime. Well, the first line here, that creates the instance of the dictionary class, and this line will print the dictionary and the length of the dictionary. So we can see that the dictionary is shown here, and that the length is three, because there are three items. Now, on this line, what's actually happening is I'm sending this message, and what this message is going to do, it's going to invoke the pop item method within the instance of the dictionary class, and that will result result in a value returned to here and that value is arbitrary. In other words, it'll be one of the key value pairs from the dictionary. Now I don't know which one because it's done on an arbitrary nature. But if I have a look at this line, it's going to print the dictionary, it's going to print the length of the dictionary and it's actually going to print the returned value. So if we have a look here, we can see the dictionary. And if you have a look, it now only has two items. And you can see that Germany and Berlin have been removed. If we have a look at this two, that's actually the length of the dictionary, as it should be two, because we've only got two items in the dictionary now. And if you look here, that's the value that was returned. And you can see it's Germany, Berlin which ties up with the fact that Germany Berlin does not appear here because it's been removed. So we can see that this particular message here both removes one of the key value pairs and also returns that key value pair. A few things to look at in the program. If you look here, there's the dictionary. And if you look here, there's the dictionary after an item has been removed. But have a look at the brackets. You can see they're curly. Whereas here, if you have a look, you can see that the brackets are not the curly ones. They're the straightforward ones. That's because this here is an example of a tuple. So when, in fact, this here goes and gets the value from the dictionary and assigns it to this, this receives it as a tuple. Now I'm going to run the program again and look at the runtime as you can see here. And on this occasion, if you look here, you can see that we have UK London as one of the items and Germany Berlin as one of the items. And we can see the length again is two. Whereas over here, we can see we have a tuple that's France and Paris, which is different from what we saw here. And that's because when we actually send this particular message, the items from the dictionary are chosen arbitrarily. It doesn't choose a particular one. We don't know which one it's going to choose. And if you run it again, you should see that you will get a different runtime each time. Sometimes they'll three or four will be the same, but then eventually it'll choose a different one. And of course, if the dictionary was much bigger with much more items, the chance of you seeing a different runtime will obviously increase. We need to consider the following. The pop item method raises a key error if the dictionary is empty. Let's have a look at a computer program to illustrate this. Here's the program here, and on this line you can see that we have produced an empty dictionary. That's a dictionary that has no items. And on this line, we're going to print that dictionary and we're going to print the length of the dictionary. And if we have a look at the runtime as shown here, you can see that this line is responsible for this output, showing us the empty dictionary and also the length of that dictionary is therefore zero. Now this line has sent a message to invoke the pop item method. And this is the result 
we've had this error occurring here which says pop item method dictionary is empty now it is saying I can't remove something from the dictionary because there are no items there so it throws up this error now as a programmer you have to catch these errors but that's something for another video I just want you to point this out at this particular point that if you attempt to send a message to an empty dictionary to invoke the pop item method you're going to get this error check out the supporting website for these videos in addition why not follow me on twitter as i issue a tweet every time i upload a new video